During the entire Battle of Britain, there was only one Victoria Cross awarded for the bravery of a pilot. But should there have been a second to the South African flying officer, Percy Burton? Burton's many supporters certainly make a good case that he ought indeed to have been the recipient of the VC, Britain and the Commonwealth's most prestigious decoration for bravery. Percival Burton was born in Cape Province and was mobilized into the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve early in the Second World War. He flew in hurricanes from June 1940, the month before the Battle of Britain started. On the morning of September the 27th, 1940, an enemy force of 15 Junker bombers and 24 Messerschmitt fighters flew across the channel. Their target was London. Burton took off from RAF North Weald in Essex with 11 other Hurricanes from 249 Squadron. They were part of a total of 160 Hurricanes and Spitfires scrambled to intercept the threat, thereby outnumbering the attacking force. Looking up to the skies, the residents of Hailsham in Sussex witnessed a remarkable duel. Screaming just above the town's rooftops were Burton's Hurricane and an enemy fighter. As the two planes lifted away, they were only yards apart with Burton's hurricane directly on the tail of a Messerschmitt. They raced around for some 40 miles in a do or die contest. However, as Burton's aircraft passed below the Messerschmitt, he banked his hurricane so that the tip of the wing made contact with the tailpiece of the Messerschmitt. The timing of the maneuver was perfect. The tail broke off the German plane but so too did part of the Hurricane's wing. The Messerschmitt spiraled into the ground while the Hurricane crashed into a large oak tree. Two enemy crew and Burton all lay dead, their bodies little more than a stone's throw apart in a field. Being so far from his South African home, Burton was later interred at St. Andrew's Church near RAF Tangmere in Sussex. But what exactly had happened in the final seconds of the duel? Eyewitnesses agreed that Burton's actions had been deliberate. This was considered a legitimate tactic if all else failed. It was not a suicidal maneuver as carried out by Japanese pilots, but it was highly risky and could and often did end in the attacker's death. Out of ammunition and possibly fatally wounded, Burton seems to have knowingly severed the Messerschmitt's tail to prevent its escape. Burton was soon accorded hero status locally, and he was recommended for the VC. Documents from the time show that careful consideration was given by military commanders as to how to acknowledge Burton's bravery and that of an earlier action by Flight Lieutenant Nick Nicholson, also of 249 Squadron. Nicholson, who was badly burned during his action, was awarded the VC, while Burton, also aged 23, was only mentioned in dispatches. But why had the VC been denied to Burton? Cynics might speculate that a live VC winner was of greater value to the nation's war effort than a dead one. Or perhaps it was felt that to have two VCs from one squadron in just two months was unacceptable. Perhaps the act of ramming an enemy aircraft was deemed to lack the glory usually associated with the VC. We shall never know for certain what exactly went through Burton's mind in those final seconds before the collision, or indeed why he was denied the VC. Remarkably, the oak tree that Burton crashed into still stands and is marked by a wooden cross bearing a plaque a simple reminder of his gallantry 80 years ago.
Flying officer Percy Burton was one of those famously referred to by Winston Churchill on August the 20th, 1940, as the few. And my interest in gallantry medals, particularly the VC, spans well over half a century. And I have long ago concluded the way in which they are awarded is an imperfect science. And as such, we have to accept that while every VC recipient is a hero, not every hero is the recipient of a VC.